Hey, what is up guys, NBASS here and welcome to another video in the Code with NBAS series. The problem that we're going to deal with today is called Invert Binary Tree. I am slowly uh, coming to the end of easy questions. Out of 36 easy questions, I've completed 27 of them uh, and there are 102 medium questions. So there are so many medium questions and i think it's, it's actually the right way of doing it like you'll have to i mean most of the easy questions are just to you know warm yourself up and get yourself ready for the actual questions which are the warm uh, medium questions and you have so many medium questions like 102 medium questions in this specific in this specific list but in any kind of uh, interview prep list you have like more number of medium questions and those are usually the target questions that they usually that they ask uh, so I'm planning to have like a big chunk of next week. Next videos would be uh, from the medium category. I think I'm going to struggle doing those questions, but let us let us not, you know, get ourselves demotivated thinking about that. Now that we have some preparation and some practice on how to do easy questions, we'll, it'll be good moving on to the medium questions. So there are so many medium questions, 102, and in the end we have 32 hard questions. So maybe like I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to stick to that uh, in this specific order. Currently, I'm making uh, a video every alternate, every other day. So if I post a video today, then the next video is going to be the day after tomorrow. So I'm planning to start with a medium questions soon. So uh, after the end of easy questions, I'll jump into medium questions. Uh, I am thinking maybe like I can do two medium and one hard question or for the first one or two weeks, I'll stick to only medium questions until I get the hang of it. And later I'll do two medium and one hard question. I mean, hard questions take time. Apparently, uh, that is the expected behavior. Hard questions take a lot of time. So uh, what people suggest is not to spend too much time on a hard question, but do more number of medium questions. So we'll be doing two medium questions and one hard question. And if I think like that is being too long, if, if the video length is like more than 50 to 60 minutes, then I will probably cut it down uh, for the video part. I'll, I'll do like one entire week of medium questions and the next week I'll have two medium and one hard. So it'll practically be like five medium questions and one hard question. So I'll, I'll try to work something out, but eventually I'm, I'm not going to do only medium questions for a while and then jump into all hard questions. But maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do more medium questions, but every now and then I'll touch, uh, I'll get into one hard question and try to do, do the hard question as well, because that is where the entire co core and crux is, right? The medium questions and the hard question. So yeah, that is the plan for upcoming videos and upcoming practice sessions of mine. But today the problem is invert to binary tree. I think it's a famous question. Uh, I have never looked into this question before. I have no submissions on this yet. Uh, that, that that has been a problem. Like I've been trying to make other videos, but there are some problems that I've already discussed before or th that I've already solved before in Lead Code. Like, like I said, I started Lead Code somewhere in the month of April or May, I guess. I started doing some questions uh, periodically. So there were some questions that I wanted to discuss in the video, but uh, I've already covered them. So it wouldn't be as proper as, you know, me discussing, uh, solving something from scratch and doing it. Uh, this question, I've never done it before, but I've heard of this question. Let, let us get into the question. Uh, the question is invert a binary tree. That is the that is the single line description that they've given. And I, I, when I first looked at the question, it kind of felt weird for me because when I heard invert a binary tree, it was like you have a root node and then all the child nodes and then you have a leaf node. When they say invert, did they mean this like a root node and you know child nodes coming up and then you have several leaf nodes? That didn't make sense to me. But then I once I saw the examples, I realized I was just overthinking and. It, this is not what it means, right? So invert a binary tree is simply uh, make a binary tree, which is a mirror image of the existing binary tree. So we have four, two, seven, one, three, six, nine, right? The mirror, um, the mirror image of this would be four and two is the left child and seven is the right child. But here seven becomes the left child, two becomes, becomes the right child. And for seven, you have six and nine as the left and right child nodes. And here you have nine and six. So practically, if you look at this, every left subtree became a right subtree of the tree of the node, and every right, left subtree became the right and right sub and, and every right subtree became a left subtree. So when I think about this, when I think about it in you know a higher level, it seems very simple, and I believe it is simple. But let us see. Like I, I don't know why this was very complicated. 
I mean, I'm not sure if this story is completely true, but they say the the uh, the developer of Homebrew, Homebrew is a package installer in Mac. Uh, a home, the developer of Homebrew was rejected from Google interview because he couldn't do this problem inversion of binary tree. You know, this uh, this is like uh, an, a famous argument that goes on. Like, uh, when, whenever you join a company, okay, most part of your job involves building things and constructing or you know developing products but not solving algorithmic questions or data structure questions. So when you're joining a company, you're screwed and grilled on data structures and algorithmic questions. So why do you spend so much time and put so much focus in data structure and algorithm questions while you don't use them as frequently in your day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day job? So that is a famous uh, argument that goes on. I don't know, it's, it's kind of, uh, what do you say? It's, it's a polarized discussion. So let's not get into that discussion for now, but this was this is a famous question. I don't know why the developer of Homebrew couldn't do it, but let's go ahead and try to do it. So when we look at the plan of action, it looks very straightforward. You have a to group node. Make its left subtree as right and right. Yes, left. Repeat the process for its left and right nodes. Right? This is the plan. You take a root node. If root node is none, then your job is done, right? So you would say if none return directly. If it's not none, you would look at its left subtree and right subtree. You will swap the subtrees and then you will call the same recursive function for its left and right subtrees. So, I mean, it can be seen as the CEO and uh, subordinate example again. So CEO wouldn't change his position, but he will, you know, go to its CEO and CFO and say, swap the roles of every two per people under you. And later you get swapped yourself. So like practically he's swapping the left and right nodes. Okay. And then he's saying, do the same for your subordinates. So let's get started. If root is none, I would just return. There is nothing I'm planning to do, right? I would return none. If not, I would say root dot left, root dot right equals root dot right comma root dot left so i'm swapping left node and right node i mean in python you can do this in a single line right so make it left subtree is right subtree and right subtree is left subtree now i'm supposed to repeat the process for the left and right subtree so i would say self dot Word tree for root dot left self dot invert tree for root dot right right now once I'm done with that what am I supposed to return actually nothing I'm just supposed to return my root node so in that case yeah if root is none return none there also I'm returning the root node if not, I'm doing the entire thing. I, I could like a different style of saying would be. I mean, this I think this is not wrong. This implementation is not wrong, but I'm trying to do it in a slightly different way. If root is not none, okay, I'll do all these operations. making the left subtree, swapping the left and right subtrees and then doing the same operation for the left child and right child. So I'll do the same thing uh, and ultimately I'm returning root. So is there anything wrong that we're doing here? Let's see, like four, two, seven, one, three, six, nine. We have four is not none. So my two became seven and seven became two, which means this entire subtree, it's not like this already. I have seven, six, nine, two, one, three. 
then I said self dot inventory root dot left. So my sevens inventory card. So my six nine would become nine six. Okay, and then nine doesn't have a left uh, left child or a right child. So there I would not go into this if condition. I would just return none. So my that that doesn't get swapped. And for six there is no left child and right child. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? Is this correct? Because this is supposed to return me the left child, but I'm not using the left child anymore. Um, actually, you know what? I think I can do this. Let's make it. Let's make them to two different lines. I know uh, it kind of feels a little complicated. A little complicated, but. So I am combining the two steps that we've discussed to make the code look simple. I don't know if, if you want to see in terms of understanding, maybe the previous one might I mean, the previous one might be much more simpler. But I don't know. This feels elegant. So if root is not none, my left child of this I mean, so four's left child would be the inverted tree of the right child. So now for force left child, I will have, uh, that will be a problem because here when I say root dot left is equal to self dot invert tree of root right, I am inverting this entire subtree. I mean, I am taking this subtree, ultimately recursively inverting it and I'm assigning the left child to be that, but my right child is gone. My left child, like my left child is gone. So I shouldn't do this directly. I will have to have something like temp equals root dot left. Okay. And then root dot left is equal to root dot rights inversion and temp. So I wouldn't have to worry about this if I've taken the comma based approach in the previous case. But right now, if I want to look, make them look in two different lines, three different lines, then this is the approach I can take. Or uh, I don't know, I'm trying to do so many things at once. Root dot left. But here I will say root dot left, comma, root dot. This is like writing a one liner, which you know <laughs> usually is used for people to show off. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm just trying that with this video, this specific problem. So root dot left would be the inverted subtree of the right, right sub inverted right subtree, and root dot right would be inverted left subtree. Right? Okay. Let's uh, have our test cases. Four two seven one three six nine. This is this case. I should have four seven two nine six three one. Okay. Now, if I have an empty tree, then I know what my output is supposed to be. Let's go for a skewed tree. If I have a left skewed tree, my output should be a right skewed tree. So for that, I have four. Or let's just say one two three four five one. I'll go for a left skewed tree. Two null. Null four null five null, right? So I should get one null two null three null four null five, right? Um, any other case? Like I'll go for an unbalanced tree. I'll have four seven null. Uh, six, nine. So I'm having four, seven, six, nine. Like, uh, like four has a left child, seven, no right child. And seven has six and nine. And that's it. So this should be four, null, seven, six, nine, right? No, it should be four, null, seven, nine, six. Okay, let's go ahead and see. One null two null three null four null five. Yeah, one null two null three null four. So it's a right skew tree. And here I have four null seven nine six. And empty list return empty. I think yeah, we covered all the bases. Let's go ahead and hit the submit button. All right, that is good. Runtime twenty four milliseconds, faster than ninety six point one six percent. 
So yeah, that is inverted binary tree. I don't know why was that so complicated. I mean, what is the solution that they have given? Approach one is recursive. Okay, this is something that we have done. They have created two nodes for the right recursive, right recursive or right inverted tree and left inverted tree. And then they swap the left and right nodes. Okay. Oh, complexity analysis. This is something that I've been meaning to do for every video, but I'm, I'm kind of forgetting. Okay. What would be the complexity analysis? Like I haven't looked at that part. I know you can see it on the screen, but let, let's just imagine I haven't seen the screen and what would be the complexity analysis? So uh, for this approach, it is a recursive approach. So we are going to visit every single element of the tree, every single node of the tree. If there are n nodes, then I'm practically visiting that node and seeing if it's having a right subtree or a left subtree. If it's having both, I'm visiting them, swapping them, coming up. So if, if we assume swap as one operation, then for every node, we are swapping its position. So for n nodes, we are having n uh, operations because I'm not doing anything twice. Like for example, if I have a subtree here, if I'm swapping it once, then there is no way I'm visiting those nodes again, right? Recursively, I'm entering, it's like a depth first approach and then I'm coming up and it's a depth first approach, I'm coming up. So if you're looking at it in terms of number of operations, then we are visiting every node only once and we are operating on every node every only once. So it would be O of N. And coming to space complexity, um, when we look at this, it feels as if we are not using any extra space at all, right? I mean, it is like in space swap, like left became right and right became left. But I mean, I'm not sure how this swap is being implemented internally, but in languages like C or Java where you, you don't have this feature of x comma y equal to y comma x for swapping you would take a temp variable and then swap it so you'll say x equal to temp like that is something that we've done like 10 minutes ago or five minutes ago uh, we haven't tested that part but that is that is the usual way of doing it so we'll take a variable called temp we'll say temp is equal to left and then left is equal to right and right is equal to temp so it is like this is how i, I used to remember like not not remember but this is how i used to uh teach so when I, when I try to explain swapping of two variables program to one of my friends back in uh, my engineering days or uh, undergrad days, this is how I used to explain. If I have to swap these two spe spectacles uh, and I'm not, I mean, if I have two hands, I can just say this, right? This is something that what, uh, what we see here in Python looks like. If we have two hands, we can just swap them like this. But imagine you only have a single hand. How would you swap? Okay. Um, so let us say we have these two memory locations. I'm swapping the left one to right and right one to left and I'm, I'm only supposed to use one hand. So what I would do is I would take a variable and put that in a temporary space. I'll, sw I'll take the right one, put that here and then take it from the temporary space, put it here. So I have a single hand. So what am I supposed to do? So I need a temporary space to make the swap, right? So for every single swap, I need that space. So if there are N nodes I'm, I'm using that. I'm swapping them in times. So for every swap, I needed that space. So I need, now again, do I need constant space? Not really, right? I mean, uh, since I'm doing it in a recursive way, I am, like I'm saying, I have taken this node, stored it in a temporary location, right? So that is only single node. And then I am taking this and putting it here, right? But uh, I'm not just putting this one here. I'm trying to take this, perform that function here, and then put it here, right? So when I'm performing this, this function, even internally in that function, I'm trying to swap variables. So even for that node, I need a space. And even for that child, node of that child, I need space. So eventually I'm at, at a single instant, I'm requiring, I'm placing all, at least like half of the elements on uh, a, a separate space taking this element, putting it back and putting the other half. So even in that other half, I am calling a function there before I swap, right? So it is like at an instant, I am I'm require, I'm placing all elements in a temporary place and swapping it. So I think we have O of N complexity if we have a temporary variable concept. But if it's if it's something like, if left X comma Y equal to Y comma X is something like this, which is not practically possible if I think in terms of, you know, uh, assembly language, because you can't just, you know, do two things at once. That is one thing. And you can't just, you know, say, I'll keep this in memory and then do it. Like memory, memory is space. 
So if it's not possible, then O of n. And if it is possible somehow, I mean, I should look into the implementation of x comma y swap in Python. If that is the case, then it is no extra space. Okay. So this one is complexity analysis. Uh, since each node in the tree is visited only once, the time complexity is O of n. Okay, that is something we came across. We cannot do better than that since at least at, at the very least we have to visit each node to invert it. Of course, right? So you can you cannot invert a node without visiting it. It makes sense. Because of recursion, O of H function calls will be placed on the stack in the worst case, where H is the height of the base, where H is the height of the tree. Okay, okay, this is something that I think I didn't think of. Okay, yeah, it is important, right? So when, when we are doing uh, space complexity for recursive functions, we have to keep in track of function recursion stack as well, recursive stack. So here he says, since we are visiting every single node, so we are visiting all n nodes. So we need n uh, uh, function calls, like n, for, n, for each function call, we are adding it into a stack space. So that's why he says it's O of n. Okay. Okay, we haven't taken the iterative approach, but iterative approach is taking a queue and doing it. So it is breadth first search. Is it that format? You have a queue, you've added that queue. While queue is not empty, you're taking the current node and you're taking the temp node, you're swapping it and you're adding the left and right to the queue and you're repeating the process. Okay. Okay, this, this is the exact code that we've written. Elegant recursive Python solution. Wow. Okay, this code is elegant. Okay, I think I'm spending too much time in the solution part. So that's pretty much it. That's the end of this video. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. It helps the video and also the channel. And if you want to watch more of these videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get notified every time I make new videos, then hit the bell icon. If you stayed until this long, as always, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.